Imagine knowing that everything you experience is a reality you are creating. Imagine finally understanding that with the right belief system, you never have to be sick. Imagine never having to worry or have fear about anything because you are in control of it all. What will you do when you find out this is all true and what you have been told to believe is false? It is time to learn the truth. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Tuesday, September 24th, 2013, and I am your host, Dave Dickey. And for the next 30 to 40 minutes, uh, we will be hosting Reality Changer Radio. I uh, Tonight, I want to talk about the workplace. It's a big deal for a lot of people, especially now with the new economy and what is perceived to be the new economy. And I want to talk to directly the people that are having a hard time at work. So what we're going to talk about tonight is uh, not only those idiots and assholes that are at your job. You know, you've got the, the jerks and the idiot boss and the people that are trying to actually hold on to their management position that they were just given two seconds ago right out of school. And you know that drives you insane. But we're also going to talk about how you can avoid all that. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great if you knew that you had the power to just avoid all of that crap that everyone else has to deal with? And when your friends call you and they go... You go, hi, how was your day? And they go, man, 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 man. You know, and for 15, 20 minutes, they go on about how screwed up their life is. And you go, oh, that's too bad. So anyways, uh, what about this weekend? That's the conversation you want to have. You do not want to, A, feed into their horrible week with their screwed up job and their horrible life. Or, you do not want to do, B, you do not want to feed them with your horrible life or screwed up job. Because you don't have one. You don't have one deliberately. You don't have one because you don't have to have one. You don't have one because you've decided that every day you're going to do one of two things. And you might do both. A, you're going to go to bed visualizing the very next day as an awesome place to work. And these people are not an issue to you because you realize you've created these people. And B, which is your alternate or partner, B is to celebrate the fact that everything you do is for a reason and your subconscious is controlling it all. And if there happens to be an idiot at work you know that it's just a little bit of advice from your subconscious to take a look inside and discover why you need that kind of a jerk at work. What information are you getting from that idiot that's forcing you to look at it? And when I say forcing you to look at it, you know what I mean from a painful standpoint. You spend the day and you're just all like, oh, I hate that SOB. What a dick. And you go home and you're still in that same mood. What I want you to do is I want you to take about 10 or 15 minutes 
Here we go. I know I'm beating a dead horse here. Take 10 or 15 minutes out for yourself. What a concept. And think about this dick that you just created at work. Why did you do that? Because it is you. If you've been listening to even one of these broadcasts, or if you even have a clue as to what the law of attraction is, you know I don't have to spell this out for you. Or do I? You created all this. So even if you've done all your things and you've crossed all the T's and dotted the I's and you still have this idiot at work that's just shoving stuff in your face, you have to ask yourself, why do I need that? Why is this dirt bag ruining my day-to-day existence at work when I don't even really want to be there. It is your subconscious, it's your spirit, actually it's your spirit, reaching out, trying to point you back inside and show you exactly what's going on with you. A great example is an old student of mine who had several relationships that didn't work out. In every one of them, it was obvious he was the clinging vine, and, you know, they couldn't handle that. They could handle him, but nobody wants somebody that's glued to the hip. And come to find out, after many sessions with him, he missed his mother's attention, which was being glued at the hip. Well, what happens to this guy? He goes to college, and... The only dorm that he can find, his roommate, is one of those freaks. And I say freaks in a way that you don't understand because of our old conditional programming. The freaks that have their own issues, never had anyone to talk to. They don't feel comfortable with anybody. And so anyone that's nice to them, they cling to them like Ivy. Because they think, oh, here's one person in the whole entire earth that actually likes me. So I have to be nice to them and do all kinds of things for them. But then if they show niceness to anyone else, I'll get really pissed off. Because I thought it was just for me. That's how screwed up those quote-unquote freaks are. Okay, But they're just like you and me. But what happened is this guy goes to college and the only roommate he can find is one of these guys. And he says to me, he's lamenting to me about how awful it is. And, you know, he found himself at one time right in front of everyone just telling this guy to F off and, you know, leave him alone. And and I asked him, you know, how'd you feel? You know, he felt, well, the guy wouldn't leave me alone. It was like I couldn't do anything. And you know, if I said anything, it was against him. And, all this. and this is already after I had documented relationship after relationship about this very thing happening to him. So I reminded him of our previous conversations. And I said, wow, does that look like anybody you might know? And fortunately, and this doesn't happen to everybody, but fortunately he got it. The universe was showing him himself. Okay, so when you're going through these things at work, think about all the stuff that you're going through on a personal basis. But at the same time, take heart that even if you're going through all this crap, you can still change your environment on a day-to-day level. And what I mean by that is, think about what you would like to have happen. Okay, think about all the the way you would like your day to go. Visualize it. As I tell you guys all the time, visualization is the number one tool to use in manifesting your life because we are that powerful. So visualize. Sit there for a moment. Take a nice breeze in the air. Some calming music. No butt heads to bother you. Okay, you need like 15, 20 minutes. Just sit down and think about what your day would look like if it was better than your worst day. Okay, think about that. 
It doesn't have to be perfect, just better than your worst day. That's where you start. Start ahead of the game. You can work your way up to the top of the pack, but start ahead of the game. And visualize what that would look like. Close your eyes, sit back, do some slow, deep breathing, relax. And think about, what do I want tomorrow to look like? How cool would it be if blah, 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 or my day would be perfect if only blah, 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 or if I could only achieve this on an everyday basis or every other day basis. I mean, you know, you don't have to go ballistic at first. Start from little miracles. What would it look like? See it happening. Feel the emotion. That's what's really important here is for you to feel the emotion of what it would be like to go through the day knowing that what you did before today dictates today. How would that feel to you? If you could just do that one time, what would that mean to you? What kind of message would that be sending to your confidence level? And if you could do that one day, and then the next day is shit, what does that say to you? How do you feel about that? Remember, placebo drugs only work because people believe in it. And not all of them work. Real drugs don't always work. So keep that in mind when you're trying to set yourself up for a good work day. Let's say you do all this stuff and, hey, you know, tomorrow's a great day. So then where do you go? What do you do? Do you just revert back to everything you've always done before and say, oh, that was cool. That worked. But I don't know if I'm ready for all that. Well, what are you ready for? I mean, seriously, once you've proven to yourself that you can change the future, that you can change your reality, what are you ready for? And if you're not ready for some things, why not? Are you that happy with all the crap that goes on in your life by living by default? Are you seriously? If you are, I want you to call our 424 number and I want you to explain to me exactly why you feel you don't need to change the crap that's going on in your life. I seriously want to know. Because when you look around at most of your neighbors and you ask them, is there anything you would change in your life? If 99% of them say no, I want to know about it. Because I don't think that's the world we're living in right now. I think the world we're living in right now is one of uh, less contact, ignorance, uh, and not willing to step forward because most of our neighbors don't. But at the same time, I think the world we're living in is that shift that they erroneously talked about the end of the world at 2012. So let's take idiots at your work. Okay, so let's say, for instance, I'm going to throw some occupations out there. And please, if you would like a certain occupation addressed, call our 424 number, leave a message, and I'd be more than glad to... Uh, address it on another call. Absolutely. Okay? But trust me when I tell you this. The way you change this stuff is, is the same for every scenario. It's like making different cakes. You're going to make a cake a certain way. The flavor of it is different. You make a vanilla cake, you make a chocolate cake, you make a pineapple cake. The basic way you make a cake is the same. What it comes out to be 
is the changes in the recipe. And that's the way the law of attraction and manifesting works. You want a better day at work. You want a better day here. You want to do this. You want to do that. Basically, it's exactly the same. The variables change depending on what we're talking about. When we're talking about work or we're talking about it, you know, an appointment or this or that or whatever. Okay. So think about the day that you want to have tomorrow. And think about the one obstacle that you perceive will stop you from having a pretty good day. And I'm not talking about an awesome day. Let's start with a pretty good day. Because most of us, eh, hey, how was your day? Oh, it was okay. Okay, great. You know, what do you want for dinner? Okay. I want to change that for you guys. I want I want everybody out there to say, hey, how was your day? Hey, it was effing awesome. Can I tell you about some cool stuff that happened? Oh, yes, but then I have to tell you about cool stuff that happened to me. And then, you, you know, whoever you're talking to, you have like an hour-long conversation, and then you get to food or the rest of the evening. Okay? Everybody's day should be effing awesome. There's no reason for it other than the fact that we've all gotten comfortable with the old school programming. And that's the bottom line. And the old school programming points the fingers to everybody else instead of acknowledging the fact that you actually have the power to control it all. Okay? So I want you to think about tomorrow. And I want you to think about one thing, just one, that would make your day better tomorrow. And it, like I said, it could be just pretty good. It doesn't have to be fantastic. Just better than it was yesterday or today. Hey, let's take today. Think of something that tomorrow would definitely make your day better than today. Whatever it is. Could be personal, could be work, could be whatever. However, it will have, and trust me when I tell you this, personal or work will have an impact on your work. Day to day, 365 a year. Okay? So don't try to separate the two because they're both joined. You know the feeling. You you have a fight with your, your partner on your way out from the door and you go to work and you're in a shitty attitude. Okay. Let's not let's not uh, cut corners here. We all know what we're talking about. All right. So it all has an effect. So think about one thing that would be different from today that would make tomorrow a better work day. And even you guys that have missed the live broadcast and are listening to this recorded, whenever you listen to it, Think about the day you're listening, okay? And then think about the very next day. What one thing in your mind would make it better? Okay? Give yourself some time and listen. Let me throw in a little bit here about intuition. A lot of times the conscious mind will come into play and it will want to control the game. And what You'll recognize that when something pops into your head in situations like this, and then all of a sudden you start analyzing it. Your conscious mind, left side of the brain, however you want to say it, wants to analyze the crap out of everything, but also wants to keep control and wants to keep you in a victim mentality. Your intuition, your inner voice, your connection with spirit, your connection with God, however you want to call it, is your gut feeling. It's your first voice. And you can be trained to listen to that and act upon that. So when I tell you to think about one thing that would make all the difference from today to tomorrow, get yourself comfortable, get yourself calm, don't have any chatter in your head and just go with it. And the first thing that comes to mind, that's it. However bizarre it seems, that's the thing.
Okay. So then what you want to do is you want to grab that thing and recognize that it's real. This is what your spirit is telling you will make tomorrow better. Okay. So now you have two options here. You can test this if you don't believe it. And you can say, okay, well, I'll write this down, but I won't do anything. I'll just see how tomorrow plays out and what significance it has on this thing. Okay. Or you can go ahead and take action because, hey, what do you got to lose but a terrible day at work? And what you want to do is address the issue and say, okay, for instance, and I don't know what your issue is, but we're going to give an example here. Let's say, for instance, Todd always calls out on Thursdays because he knows his supervisor, which is your supervisor, calls out on Thursdays. And Todd was given a job that you were taking care of just because there wasn't anyone else. And Todd doesn't want to do this job, and you know Todd's an idiot. Let's say, for instance, you know that there's a pattern here. What that does is that sets up a negative belief for you. Because your mind on Thursdays believes that two things are going to happen. A, your boss is not going to be there. And B, Todd's not going to be there. Now, why is this significant? This is significant because you've already set yourself up for a belief system that on Thursdays, you have to do Todd's job because Todd won't do it. Okay? So now, just because he has done that in the past doesn't mean that you have to take it on. However, because you have been the only one who took it on before Todd, you build this belief system about Todd. And you build this belief system that sends energy out to the universe. And it really doesn't matter who else would be able to take on Todd's work on Thursday. You have decided, by the way you've built your belief system, that you are the only one who will. Now the universe doesn't care. A rat's behind. Good, bad, or indifferent about the energy you send out there. The universe only cares about giving you what you feel and desire the most. Good, bad, or indifferent. So in the energy here is, in a very real sense, that on Thursdays, you take on Todd's job. Guess what happens? On Thursdays, you take on Todd's job. Like it or not. That, folks, is Law of Attraction 101. That is what happens 24-7, 365 like it or not, you don't have to agree. Just look around at your life. The bottom line here is you have to look out for yourself and recognize these little demons that get in the way. And they're things that you design. We've designed this entire reality. It's all just an illusion. As I've mentioned before, the real change comes in when you recognize that it's all your responsibility, whatever's happening to you, and then how are you going to deal with it? Are you just going to sit back and let quote-unquote destiny happen, and destiny's a load of crap, and you know it as well as I do. Destiny is living by default. It's, it's a point of blame. It's an excuse. Well, I couldn't do it because... Oh, shut up. You couldn't do it because. I'm so tired of hearing that. 
We're in the 21st century. We've had this shift. Everybody needs to wake up. And if this seems a little harsh, then perhaps you need to come to some of my classes or workshops. Because the bottom line is, the world is not as you want it. And I don't even have to be a prophet or an expert to prove that. The world is come up with people of limited beliefs and negative beliefs, and you have an opportunity to change that for yourself and for everyone else around you. So why not change it on a daily basis at your job? And if you don't even believe that I know what I'm talking about, how fun would it be just to prove me wrong? Give it a shot. Try it. Talk to other people. Would it be so horrible that you wake up one morning and you think to yourself, I'm going to have an awesome day, and then, bam, you have an awesome day? Oh, my God, maybe Dave had something to say. The bottom line here is you control every aspect of your reality. You are the ones, not me, not somebody else. You are the ones that actually have the power to change it all. You can be had, oh, hell yeah, you can be had because of that giant curtain that has been pulled over your eyes and you've been mesmerized to think that you should help in pulling it down further. But allow me to introduce you to the opening in the stitches on one of the sides because that opening is your enlightenment. That opening is your window to the truth. And the truth is, you are just as powerful as any person on the planet. It doesn't matter your race or your income or anything else. And once you're able to realize that and once you take satisfaction from that power, then what are you going to do? Where's your excuses now? You don't have any. Once you know that you're just as important as anyone else that you've blamed in the past or have been taught to blame in the past, as far as, well, they're responsible for my existence, my parents, my grandparents, my government, whatever. Once you know that you are just as powerful as those people that you have handed off power to in the guise of, well, it's not my fault. What are you going to do? Do you want to keep having bad days at work? Do you want to keep living by default? Listen, changing your day at work is no different than changing your everyday life. That's one of the messages I truly wish to get out to everybody here. The way that you have a better day at work is the way that you have a better day, period. Okay? So you want to start identifying what it is that bothers you at work. Okay? That's part of the healing. That's part of letting go. Taking charge is the general everyday part of the happiness meditation and the guided imagery and the emotional lists and on and on and on. Don't think of work as a separate piece that has to be treated differently. None of your specific experiences, work, love, relationships, blah, blah, blah. None of that shows up to be instances where you have to treat them differently than the others. The process is exactly the same. You're looking to control your environment in a positive outcome. None of it is different. There may be little tweaks here and there, you know, like the recipe for making a pie or making a cake, but the basic ingredients are the same, right? You need eggs for both, right? You need water and you need to mix them up and all this other stuff. 
So don't think that just because it's this or that, that you're going to have to do some whiz-bang special deal that you need to spend more time on or that you need to come up with an excuse as to why you can't do it. Okay? Because the time allotted and the amount of energy and the way to do it for each and everything, your work, your relationships, blah, 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 is exactly the same. You see? This is what I'm trying to get out to everybody. There's no reason to go, well, yeah, but I'm actually working on my job thing, and you know how hard that is. No, that's bull crap. No, that's old school excuses for not doing it. Okay? There's no reason not to have a great day at work every day. There's no reason not to have a great day every day. You see? And that's where the generalization comes in. If you want to specifically track something that's going on at work, that's one thing. But your day-to-day existence needs to be done in such a way where whatever you do, whether it's work or play or just laying in bed all day, has a positive effect because you have designed that day to have a positive effect no matter what. There are no what-ifs. There are no what-ifs. What-ifs are plan B. Okay? And I'll quote Will Smith again, because he does it great. I don't think of plan B, because it gets in the way of plan A. Okay? So what I want you guys to do, we're 32 minutes in now, I'm going to give you a little exercise to do, okay? So get out your pencils and papers or whatever it is because you know how I hate typing this stuff. That's just for remote viewing. And I want you guys to actually infuse the energy that you have into your paper and writing things. So I'm going to give you a minute or so here to grab something to write with. Okay, now, first thing we're going to tackle is a specific situation, okay, at work, okay? And the way you deal with these things, uh, this is the beauty of all this. It doesn't matter what it is, you're going to deal with it the exact same way, okay? So it doesn't matter if it's a... A spreadsheet or an idiot or a boss or whatever. All right. Get ready to write this down. First thing you're going to write down is the situation. Whatever it is that you perceive could give you possibly a problem the next day. Very next day. Okay. That's all we're talking about is the immediate future because we're going to... Re- We're going to get a memory going for the universe here. So you write down that thing. Okay. Now, I want you to write down what would be the result of everything going great with that. What would be the result? And make it specific to the thing. Not that... Oh, my God, my day would be great. No, no, no. Make it specific. Technically, what would be the result? What would the steps be? Like, let's say, for instance, it's a spreadsheet, okay? I'll give you an example for those that you are having a hard time. Let's say it's a spreadsheet, and you're trying to figure out a certain equation, okay? So let's say, for instance, you did figure out the equation. What is the exact result of figuring out that equation? Like, Would you be able to do this report, or would you be able to tell this person, or that kind of thing, okay? I hope you're understanding where I'm going here. 
not just that, oh, my life would be great, but what is the exact result of that thing working out within itself? Okay, and let's say, for instance, it's a jerk, okay, and he's always, like, nailing you, okay? What would be the exact result of him not nailing you, for instance? There's there's a whole bunch of things here, but would it mean that he doesn't walk by your desk or, you know, he just shuts up when he walks by you or somebody calls him when he walks by you, whatever, you know? Not just that my day would be great. You understand where I'm going with this? Because this type of drilling down is what you need to do for each and every situation. Okay? So, pardon me, you're going to hear some snaps on here. It's just me cracking my knuckles. All right, so now what you want to do, and we're still working on the specific item, what you want to do is you want to visualize those particular results happening. Okay? You don't want to bring into the mix that they're happening because blah, blah, blah. No, not at all. You want to take some time out each day and visualize those things happening and see them happening and hear conversations and people telling you that this happened and this happened and this happened. Leave out of the equation why you want those things to happen. It's a spreadsheet, it's an idiot, it's whatever. Leave those out of the equation because then you're dealing with the how. Okay? All right. And you want to use that same formula with whatever the specific information is or whatever the item is. Spreadsheet, idiot, whatever. That's how you want to do that. Okay? So let's take the next step. And let's say you just want to have a better day at work. Okay? So what I want you to write down is to what happened today that could have been better. And label it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. I'm going to give you a minute to do that. Okay. All right. So you got that written down. Okay. So now what I want you to do is think about how that would look if it was different today. How would that look? How would you feel? That's the biggest thing here is how would you feel tomorrow if it wasn't like that? How did that feel? What situation are we looking at here? What does that look like? You walk into work and bam, you know, Julie's not bitching about her life. And so you don't have to talk to her about that because you've got this important project to do. You know what I mean? How, how does that look? Each one of us is different. Each one of us has a different job or whatever. So how does that look to you? What principles would you put into play? What little definitions would you put into play to make that different? You see, because that's where the real control comes in. Not somebody on the outside like myself telling you what conditions and what controls to put on that. Because this is your reality. This is where it gets crazy. This is your reality. So the only thing that can matter is what you truly believe would make a difference. I could tell you it make, would make a difference, but if I'm the only one that believes that, then the difference is only going to show for me. The best I can hope for is to explain to you the process and show you the recipe to use to make a difference. But it only makes a difference if it makes a difference to you. And you're the only one that matters in this equation. So that's why you have to do all this work. Okay? 
You're the one that has to come up with all this. You do the math. And then you do the visualization of tomorrow. You take the 15 minutes out each day and you do the visualization and hear the sounds and smell the smells and taste the taste and everything else. But it doesn't matter a rat's ass if it doesn't have a connection with you. If you're just doing it just to do it or you're just doing it out of a book that shows you how. If you don't have an emotional connection with it, it doesn't matter. And you can do it a million times and it won't matter. What matters is what you personally feel will be a different day for you. That's what matters. Okay? So you've got your two scenarios. All right? The one where there's a specific thing, like an idiot or a spreadsheet or whatever, and then just a general day. But what's most important in both of these is that you do what you feel would be the best scenario for you. Nobody else. I don't care about the douchebag sitting next to you. Don't worry about it. We're talking about you and only you. Okay? So now... We're going to wrap this up for this evening, okay? But uh, I want to give you guys all an invitation to come out to the Learning Light Foundation in Anaheim this weekend, uh, Saturday, uh, September 28th. From 2 to 5, I'm going to be doing a three-hour workshop on the basic laws of attraction. It's called uh, Law of Attraction 101 going to be doing some great uh, stuff out there and I'm even going to be turning people on to slowing down and speeding up time okay because you really can do that and it's not that big a deal once you change your belief system and please keep in mind that like every week that I tell you guys none of this is that big of a deal as long as you change your belief system you can have some wonderful things happening okay so until next time, um, guys, come out to my advanced class in Long Beach and Fullerton this week. Uh, if you're not sure where they are, go to uh, what you think is what you get dot com, and you can click on the classes button at the bottom, and you can find the address. Okay, email me uh, realitychanger57 at gmail dot com. Or go on our website and find our 424 number and call me and uh, tell me what an idiot I am. <laughs> All right. So everybody have a fantastic week. Uh, if you do come out to one of my uh, classes or workshops, please be sure to hit me up and tell me that you heard the radio broadcast. All right. Otherwise, uh, my reality is not your reality. What are you creating today? All right. Well, that's it for today's show, folks. I hope you enjoyed it and are a little closer to living life on your terms. Join me next week, won't you, for another mind-blowing show about the truth of reality. Until then, my reality is not your reality. What are you creating today?